Now, one of the things we often want to do is we want to move beyond the firm level and we want to talk about the industry level or the economy-wide level. So let me talk now about an industry model. And in particular, I'm going to focus on a special case of the industry model, which is the constant returns to scale case. And there are two reasons why the industry model is often tied to the assumption of constant returns to scale. One is, if you're going to assume constant returns to scale, then the firm becomes kind of not a very easily analyzed story, right? Because with constant returns to scale, if the price is above cost, you want to produce an infinite amount. If the price is below cost, you don't want to produce at all. And if the price is equal to cost, you're invariant as to, it's indeterminate what output you want to produce. So kind of the determination of output in that model is fairly difficult. So that's one argument for why, if I'm interested in, a mo in an industry that has inherently constant returns to scale at the firm level, then when I go to the industry level, I might have to move to the industry to even think about what an equilibrium looks like. I might have to go to the industry level to talk about equilibria because the equilibrium at the firm level is somewhat indeterminate. Now, the other motivation is, no, at the firm level, we have diminishing returns to scale for some of the reasons we talked about before. That is, eventually, the firms run into problem coordinating all of this larger scale, run into various features that cause diminishing returns at the firm level. But at the industry level, we're going to have constant returns to scale because the industry can, can be composed of lots of optimally sized firms. So each firm might have a U-shaped cost curve, but I can build up my industry by having a bunch of firms in the industry. So even though the firms have diminishing returns after some point, the industry essentially has constant returns because it can replicate the operation, right? So it's kind of like the grocery business. You might have an optimal size for a grocery store or even a grocery chain, but we can increase the amount of grocery stores and we could have constant returns to scale by just building more and more stores that are essentially the same. So those are two arguments that get you kind of industry analysis with constant returns to scale. You start with constant returns to scale, then you're sort of pushed toward the industry as where you're going to find the equilibrium. Or you could say, even if I don't have constant returns to scale at the firm level, I might approximate it at the industry level. So if I'm going to be interested in industry, I'm going to assume constant returns to scale. So that's our model. We're going to have constant returns to scale. And I'll do the two input case to make life relatively easy. And so let's think about when you have constant returns to scale. Everybody knows what constant returns to scale means. What does constant returns to scale mean? Well, at a fundamental level, it says f of t times l and t times k equals t f of l and k. Right? That's what constant returns to scale means, is if I multiply the amount of labor and capital by some proportion, I just get that much more output. So if you make t equal to 2, it says twice as much labor and twice as much capital will produce twice as much output. Right? That could either be what's going on at the firm level, or maybe I'm just duplicating firms to get that same result. Okay. 